Hello and welcome to the Hairdresser Strong Show. I'm your host, Robert Hughes, and this is my guest, Sean Leonard. Today, we're going to hear his story from aspiring stylist to becoming a salon owner. Sean, would you introduce yourself, please? Hi, I'm Sean Leonard, um, coming to you from Alexandria, Virginia, just outside of Washington, D.C. Awesome. Thank you so much. So, um, so for our viewers that don't know Sean, uh, Sean owned a, a salon for a while in Georgetown, and um, I speak to a lot of uh, young stylists and just stylists in general who have this dream of becoming a salon owner one day. So I thought it'd be a good idea to have a conversation about, you know, what that looks like and hear different, hearing different people's stories about, you know, from stylist or even like student to salon owner and what was that journey. So um, why don't we start from the beginning? Like how and why did you get into hair? How did that happen? You know, my, my, my parents divorced when I was really young and my mom uh, was awarded custody of my sister and I, and she was a sole definition of a wallflower. Um, she studied art. She graduated from the University of Maryland in art eventually. But um, I, I, I was like surrounded by that environment as a child. Um, my mom, uh, you know, would have me help her stretch her canvases to paint. And I learned color, you know, the color wheel, tertiary colors, you know, as, as a kid, as a child. And, um, and I also um, learned clay and all that kind of stuff in the different stages of clay as a kid growing up. Um, one of the areas that, that she settled in the longest was Baltimore City, and that was in the 80s. And it was a very rough environment as a child and as a young, you know, uh, stranger growing up in Baltimore. It was, you can imagine the stories um, growing up there as a kid. And, um, you know, my escape was my mom just telling me, you know, uh, latchkey kid, go home and paint something or, you know, make something or whatever. And, um, and, uh, you know, I, I, I did all that. And, uh, and I found that my, my, my friends in that environment, uh, couldn't afford to go to the barbershop because they were in the same situation I was. And I was pretty much a self-taught barber at that age. Um, and I was better at it than all my other friends at the time. And, and I can only chalk it up to the fact that maybe I had an eye for artistry, you know, and like shape nice. and w whatever else I got into corporate sales. I was really good at it. It was like that Baltimore hustle saying, you know, and I was dating a girl that she was going to hair school and we lived together and all this stuff. At the time, Grand Web was one of the only accredited schools in the United States. So they took, I still had part of my GI bill left. Nice. So Graham Webb accepted part of my GI bill. All right. So, so let's hear about um, how you got uh, your first salon job. And, yes. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, let's hear about that. Sure. So not just that, but even in hair school, I had this vision for, for a salon one day, okay. even then with with the background of of my mother and the artistry and all this kind of stuff i had this vision that i wanted to create an atmosphere of artistry and i had the vision then of what eventually became easel the name of my salon you know obviously uh being like this rising star from from our academy it was that that it was a well known academy I was kind of interviewing other salons as they were interviewing me. <clears throat> and there was this really kind of well-known local hair salon chain within the DMV area called PR and partners. And, um, and that they were doing a lot of awesome stuff, education shows and all this stuff. And I thought in my mind, that's where I was going to go. So I went, and interviewed and they hired me and all this stuff. But the owner was out of town. But at the time, I didn't even know if I had a job. Yeah. Nobody took my social security number. I was like showing up and, you know, they had all these classes I had to take, you know, even though I just came out of one of the best schools in, in the nation. Asked, even though you came out of school and had all this training, they still wanted you to do training. How did you feel about that? And uh, 
Neil, do you have any advice for uh, young stylists that are you know, about to embark on that journey? If you assume a humble attitude, your own good qualities will increase. Whereas where you are full of pride, there is no way to be happy. You will become jealous of others, angry with them, and look down on them, due to which an unpleasant atmosphere will be created and unhappiness in society will increase. So that being said, humility, even though you've been taught by good people and maybe you know more than them or whatever, yeah. if there's like one or two things you can pick up from a class, then that's the one or two reasons why you were there. Totally. And then um, as far as, uh, you know, as salons, not all the, not all salons are uh, run in a way where um, they're, they're like corporate America where everything's like all the T's are dot crossed and all the I's are dotted. And, um, you know, I think we're getting better as an industry, but, you know, we're still, we're still kind of informal in a lot of ways and, uh, and not as like kind of on top of stuff like that. So you said you didn't even know if you were getting a paycheck and, um, you know, at what type of, uh, what type of like uh, lack of organization or something like that is acceptable in your mind? Uh, and then how did you decide whether or not to stay uh, based on that information? So, yeah, um, you know, for me coming, coming initially into hair from a business background, I was like shocked by how yeah. nothing was organized and nothing was like, you know, structured in the sense of like business, business ethics and such. And so I was leaving, I was leaving that class and then going to pick up my, my ex-girlfriend from, from her salon. And the people that were there were always warm and inviting and they were finishing up an educational class and they would tell me like, come sit down. You're a hairdresser. Yeah come sit in on the class. They were giving it to me for free. Nice. I was like, I was like, what? Really? Like, I don't even work here. And they were like, it's okay. It's about the industry. Come on in. And, nice. and that, that was warm and ex exciting for me. And, uh, and so they were like, you should come work here. Eventually they asked me that. And, and I was like, well, you know, I got to work out the dynamics with my girlfriend <laughs> if that's, if that's okay. And, uh, you know, and, and we worked it out and that was my first salon that I actually worked at. It was a very high end salon in McLean, Virginia. 